All right, we're ready for part two. This is the Return of the Jedi of the trilogy in 20 Things You Need to Know When Renting Your RV Through RV Share or Outdoorsy. We did the first six. Here comes some more. We're going right now. Number seven. They say there's only a few things in life that are inevitable. Death and taxes. Well, number seven is taxes. All right, so you want to make this investment work for you even better? Use it for tax purposes. Now, let me tell you one thing. You can use your trailer as a second home if you don't already have one, and all you need to have is a separate bedroom area, kitchen area, and bathroom area. That qualifies as a second home, and you can write off the interest on your loan. So keep that in mind. That's uh, that saved us quite a bit of money when we were uh, doing our taxes this past year. Make sure if you're gonna make this a business business, you set up an LLC if you want to, or just for the sake of things, get a separate checking account or even so small as an envelope that goes in a safe, that goes in your freezer, that goes someplace that you're not gonna touch this money because Uncle Sam's gonna come calling and when it's time to pay the tax guy, you need to have money set aside for this business that you've just done. So make sure you set between 30 and 50% of what you make in an envelope or a checking account or someplace safe that you can go to when tax time rolls around so that you have money to pay your taxes at the end because everybody knows can't get something for free. Number eight, insurance. You gotta have it and so do they. This was the biggest question I had in renting a trailer. How do you insure it? Because, I mean, my regular insurance on the trailer, they're not covering rentals. I've called, I've asked. 90% of, of insurance companies out there won't. And we've had renters go, hey, can we use our own insurance? You can go ahead and try. You can call your, your insurance place, and if they can supply me with a rider showing exactly what, what is covered and it matches what our Dorsey or our V-Share are doing, I'm cool with that, but about 99.99% of the time, it's not the case. So make sure that when you go, you realize you're gonna get insurance and that Outdoorsy and RV Share are both gonna charge you for it accordingly. So typically speaking, when your trailer gets rented, there's an insurance charge per day, and it, it equates out, depending on what your trailer is worth, mine, it's about 17 bucks a day, is what the renter is going to pay for insurance, which I am totally cool with letting them pay for insurance because I've got mine on top of that that is gonna help if I do something, but if they do something, I wanna make sure that it's covered. Now, both Outdoorsy and RV Share, it's covered up to a million dollars, and this is also where your uh, security deposit comes in because you might have a deductible through your insurance, but RV Share and Outdoorsy also have. So you wanna make sure you cover that deductible with your security deposit if something does happen. And with the insurance, you have up to a week after the trailer has been brought back to you to file a claim. So if you're cleaning your trailer out and you figure out that the water pump doesn't work or that they stole the water pump or that something is broke or you're missing this or whatever, you can file a claim against that, but make sure you understand that you have your deductible, so it's still gonna get covered, but you still have to pay that deductible, so it's gonna come out of their security deposit. Number nine, the security deposit. Why you need it, why it's important. Like I said, security deposit, Make sure that your security deposit covers incidentals that may happen and that'll cover the deductible. I've seen people with a security deposit as little as $0 and I've seen it as much as $1,500 as a security deposit. It really depends on how comfortable you are, what your deductible is, and how everything would play out if something did happen that was catastrophic to your trailer. The Big Ten, vetting your renters. You don't want some schmo renting your baby and mucking it all up. You need to know who you're renting to and who's taking your baby out for the weekend. It's like prom for your trailer. This is one of the most important things to do is vet your renters. So you might have someone that says, hey, I want to rent your RV from this date to this date. Cool, awesome. Now you've got them on the hook. Here's what you need to do. Ask questions. Don't just willy nilly say, sure, no problem. You don't know if they even have experience towing anything. You don't even know if they have a seven pin adapter or a, a trailer hitch receiver. You don't know any of this stuff. These are simple questions that you need to ask ahead of time so that you can vet them accordingly. So make sure, you know, ask them, have you ever towed a trailer before? You know, and be specific, travel trailer, because, you know, a tiny trailer from U-Haul is not like a travel trailer. 
A boat is similar, but a tiny U-Haul, not the same. Make sure you ask them what kind of vehicle they're gonna tow with. Because I always do my due diligence, so when they tell me, oh, it's a Dodge 1500, okay, what year? What's the engine? So I can look up what their towing capacity is, because over and above making sure my trailer is safe, I want the people to be safe. I don't want them thinking that they can tow with whatever and this be too much trailer and you get some sway, even though we have sway bars, and something bad could happen. So I'm looking out for their safety as much as I'm looking out for the safety of my trailer. Ask them if the vehicle has a receiver hitch and a seven pin. Some don't, some do. If they don't have a seven pin, they don't have a receiver, then offer them delivery. But make sure they have to have those kind of things. Our trailer is small enough that if you have a pickup, you don't necessarily need a brake controller, but it really helps. And some do and some don't. Ask them where they're going. That's important. You want to know where your trailer is going to be. So if something happens and you have to go, you know, and you can kind of Google map and figure, okay, they're going up these roads and I, I don't know if I want them to take my trailer up there because I don't know these people. So make sure you know where they're going and you can Google where it is they're going so you can see the route they're probably going to take from wherever they live to where they're going and back. And if it happens to be a campground, you can look up that campground. Do they have a dump site? Do they have water? Do they, do they have electrical? Is it, you know, 50 amp, 30 amp, or 110? Who knows, but that's things that you need to know because the renter might not know. Kids and pets. That's one thing you have to decide in your trailer if you want other people's kids or other people's pets. Us, we don't want either. This is more of an adult trailer. So we set a policy that you can have kids, but we're gonna charge you for them. And kids are from zero to 18 because you're still a kid. So if you get your 14 year old son, you know, and his buddy, okay, well, we're gonna charge you per day per kid. It's just the way it is. If you have a four year old, same thing. Here's why. We had a renter one time have a two year old kid and that kid peed our bed. The very first renter we had. We had to replace the bed. So anyway, you have to make sure that you vet your renters. Will we have two year olds? Maybe, maybe not. But we did get a mattress protector to keep from having that happen again. Ask them how many people are camping with them. This trailer will comfortably, depending on how you do it, sleep four. Two on the bed, one on the couch, and you can put an air mattress on the floor for four. But if they're like, oh, we got seven people. Nope, can't do it. This trailer's not big enough to camp seven people in. You've already asked them where they're going, and you've already looked it up, but make sure you ask them, do you have propane? Do you need a propane refill? Do you need the dump feed? Because who knows, they might not want to do either of those, and you can make a little extra money on the side if you decide to rent from those people. Don't be afraid to cancel, for real. If someone rents your trailer and you just get that weird vibe like, eh, I don't like it, or they don't, they give you an answer to a question that doesn't really make sense, or you feel unsafe about it, go ahead and cancel it. I mean, I would rather cancel a rent and have my trailer still be in one piece than rent to just anybody and hope that it comes back. It's just that simple. So on both Outdoorsy and RV Share, they can verify the renters, and this is important because they verify insurance, they verify the driver, they basically vet the drivers for you to make sure that you know they have a license that they have insurance before they even get the trailer so make sure that before the trailer is rented that that is a verified driver and a verified renter and the bottom line your rv your rules so make sure that whoever rents your trailer follows your rules because they're stepping in to your second home into your vacation home you can't have people doing whatever they want and ruining your adventure and your investment. Number 11, Instamatch and Smartmatch, RV Share and Outdoorsy. That's how you get your renters, but I'm definitely active when it comes to finding renters. So on both of them, they have this thing called Instamatch or Smartmatch, depending on which site you go, and it will show you people that have been on the site and what RVs they look for. So I'm gonna go through that. I go through it every single day, and there might be only four people that have look that are in the area there might be 10 who knows but i'll go through it and i'll look at the rv that they're looking at if it's a 32 foot rv I'm not even gonna bother because my rv doesn't compare to a 32 foot rv but if they're looking for an r pod or something similar a smaller jayco whatever i'll email them and say hey by the way maybe you like our trailer check it out and they automatically get an email back so they can see what we have and it just people puts it in their mind like oh these people are actually actively looking for us and oh wow they have a really nice trailer so it's a way to get business because rv share and outdoorsy kind of put it out there for you more rv share than outdoorsy honestly rv share does a lot of this outdoorsy it's called instamatch and it's not nearly as good but rv share 
every day. Every day. Number 12, payments, the money, the cheddar. What are you going to make when you rent your trailer? What everybody wants to know, how much money am I really going to make renting my RV? Well, here's the honest truth. It's going to vary. So depending on when the renter rents, how long they rent, if they get add-ons, and things like that is totally going to depend on how much money you make. For us, on an average weekend, if someone gets the trailer on a Friday, brings it back on a Sunday, we're going to probably get anywhere between $260 and $320 is what we're going to get. Then you have to realize, take that, split it in half, or at least we do, put half of that in the bank, the other half is going to go for taxes. So figure at least the way ours works is you're going to, we get between $260 and $320 on a weekend. So split that up, you're talking 120 a day, roughly, actually a little bit less than that because both sites take out uh, a renter fee, they take out their own fees, and depending on how long the renter rents is gonna depend on how much money they take out. Uh, we had a renter rent last week, or last year, I'm sorry, for I think 10 days, and I wanna say it was through Outdoorsy, I think it was Outdoorsy, and Outdoorsy ended up making themselves like 400 bucks off the rental. I mean, granted, we ended up making, I think, somewhere around 12, but I mean, they're taking 20% off that, basically. So assume you're gonna make 80 or less percent of the total when you have a, a renter rent your RV for any length of time. All right, the big 13, understanding your RV inside and out. Make sure you know your trailer inside and out. I can't stress this enough because it's always going to happen. You're going to have a renter that's going to text you or call you and say, hey, we don't know how to do this, this, or this. If you can walk them through how to do whatever it is that they can't figure out, it's going to make your life a lot easier and it's going to save you a lot of headache when they return it with something not broke versus, well, we didn't know how to do that, so we just kind of figured, eh, and something comes back broke, and now you have a renter that's upset, you've got a broken something in your trailer. So make sure you know your trailer inside and out. Good example, renter texts you, hey, uh, it's cold, we don't know how to use your furnace, uh, how do we get heat? Uh, uh, uh. You can text them back, at least in my case, turn the propane on, turn the furnace to, to heat, set it to the temperature you want, voila. Simple things like that, and trust me, those are headaches that you can easily avoid if you know what you're doing in your trailer. Also, make sure you're not the only person that knows how to tear down and set up your trailer. Uh, my wife, I'm teaching her how to do these things so that if I'm not around, she can answer the questions as well as I can. Um, just in the case that something might go wrong, they can call her and be like, hey, we don't know what's going on. And if I'm off doing something else, she can answer the questions. So make sure there's at least a secondary person that knows the ins and outs of your trailers, how to set it up, how to tear it down, what order the things come in, because it's in the manual that you gave them, but you know, whoever reads the instructions anyway, right? So make sure somebody else knows how to operate your trailer. All right, that was part two of the top 20 things you need to know if you're gonna rent your RV through Outdoorsy or RV Share. Make sure you stick around for part three. Look over here, I'm gonna have part one up there, but I also have part three up there. Make sure you check out part one. Watch part two again, why not? And we'll have part three coming up real soon. Make sure you thumbs up the channel, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you can get all of our notifications, and I will see you guys for part three.